Hi everyone, I'm Rob, and in this video I'm going to talk about the build process for this snare drum shell. It has a 3D Celtic weave design that wraps around the drum. The design video I use for my CNC work is VCarve Pro. This is a rotary project. I'll open up and we'll look at the setup. So of course it is a rotary. The diameter of the drum will be 13.875 or 13 and 7 eighths. It's a standard size for a drum. The drum head's 14 inches, so you need to have an extra 8 inch so the drum head will actually fit around the drum. Uh, my zero point's on top of the surface. We're going to go to the center point, and of course it's rotating on the X axis. Once you set that up, here's kind of a, a 2D representation of the 3D area on the drum. Uh, it'll make more sense in a little bit. For a 3D design, we'll be using a, a dish, which this makes it's just a cutout right here, a nice rounded bottom. And then we'll put inside that the 3D weave. You can see that there. And then we'll have a box around it. This will make more sense later too. Here will be the lug holes. Here's the snare butt plate that sticks out a little bit. And then on each end you'll see here where the snare drum throw goes. We on each side we uh, cut out like that, a little island that sticks up. Okay, now we'll go over to the where we create the tool paths. So the first step, that's easier just to show you what it looks like. So we'll go to what it's going to look like. I will preview that one. Again, here's a kind of a 2D representation. Representation. It'll round it out. So that's our basic shape right now. If I zoom in here, this is sharp edge straight up and down right here. I want to bevel that. So I'm going to add a 90 degree V bit around here and that will round those edges. So let's preview that one now. A nice round on that. And then I will add the lug holes. Preview that. And there are the lug holes. So now we can get a pretty good idea what it's going to look like when we're done. Here's where the snare drum through will be. Nice rounded beveled edge, not rounded, beveled edge here. And the exact opposite side. Here's that little edge for the snare butt plate. So, okay, that's all the design process. Let's go to the next step. These are the strips of wood, or staves, as they're officially called, that will become the drum in the end. They have a 9 degree edge on each side, and there are 40 edges, there's 20 strips two times sides on each one. So 40 strips at 9 degrees equals 360 degrees. Wow! Math in action. Here the staves are laid out end to end like they will be in the drum. I simply glue each joint then roll them up using a metal clamp to hold them in place nice and tight while the glue dries. And here are a few shots after it's clamped up. Uh, the glue is drying. Wait 24 hours for a unclamp it and throw it on the machine. And yes, those clamps are just big hose clamps, or AC duct t clamps, technically, at Home Depot. Do a good job of holding it nice and tight. And now it's time to skim the outside of the drum. Each pass or rotation, it takes off only a hundredth of an inch, so it does take quite a while to do, up, up to an hour, usually. The good thing is, taking off that little bit, it leaves a really smooth surface. Little sanding needs to be done in the end. Okay, so I've slowed down the video so we can look at the screen on the CNC machine to see what these numbers actually mean. X, or the X axis, is the movement from left to right on the machine, so we've gone three tenths of an inch so far right now. This machine doesn't actually have a Y axis, so the Y number is irrelevant. Uh, Z shows us cutting a sixteenth of an inch in depth. That one will not change the hook cut, so that one is kind of relevant again. And the A axis is the rotation, or angle, by chance works out to be A, but not planned. So as you can see it's 6,300 degrees right now. 360 degrees is a circle, so that's how many circles we've done so far. It's going to count up to around, I don't know, as high as 100,000 depending on the size of the drum as it keeps going circle after circle after circle. And back to speed in real time. And now to 16 times actual speed, so the video won't last hours and hours.
I should probably figure out some kind of dust collection for this machine, because as you can see, it's spitting out quite a bit of dust that just stacks up and stacks up. And now it's time for the 3D toolpaths. As you can see, it just takes passes back and forth on the x-axis there. So each time it goes a pass, it's three and a half inches basically. The drum turns a hundredth of an inch. It comes out to a small percentage of a degree. I'll speed it up here so we can again see some movement. That's a 16 times speed, by the way. It takes about four hours to do the whole drum. Here we are looking at the screen again on the CNC machine. Let's take a look and see if we can understand what these things actually mean. These numbers and letters flying by, that is the G code of the tool paths. If you look closely, you can see there's an X and an A and a Z. That's our three axes that the machine uses. If you look at the numbers in the X column, you can see they're getting smaller. That means it's going to the left right now. The Z is going up and down. Those numbers change quite a bit. The upper portion of the screen here shows us what's happening in real time. If you look at the X number again, you can see it's getting smaller. Minus 1.1, 1.2. Once it hits minus 1.75, it'll start growing again. And there we now. Now it's getting bigger again. Once you see that X build back up to 1.75 positive again, it'll reverse direction again. If you look at that point when that happens, the A, which is angle, will change a little bit. Just that fraction of a degree. Or a hundredth of an inch for each pass. That's how much it changes. And here we go. And now we start another pass going left again. That's the quick basics on how each pass works when it goes through that 3D path. That little dance will happen thousands and thousands of times through the process. And now we fast forward past all the 3D cutting. It's time to drill the holes for the lugs. You'll notice it goes down, drills a little bit, retracts back up, lets the sawdust out, does it again, does it again, again. It's called pecking, it pecks. It removes all the sawdust out of the hole as you're drilling. If you have too much sawdust in the hole as you're drilling, it causes heat, of course, friction. Uh, it can ruin a drill bit by getting too hot, or in a worst case scenario, you can actually start a fire if you're not careful. And let's go back up to 16 times speed to keep this video moving along. And one of the last steps for the exterior of the drum is to put that beveled edge on those uh, edges around the lugs and the snare through island here. You can see it drop down, get a nice edge, round those over. The software does a good job calculating those movements. If you look on the left side of the video, you can see a ring that goes all over the drum. That'll be used in the next video, where I'll use a flush trim router bit to cut that edge all the way around the drum and get a nice clean edge. My camera died when I was 
filming the skimming of the inside of the drum, so this is actually a different drum here. And this is just the first pass going through, or early pass. Uh, but that's the process to skim the inside of the drum. And now we'll put the outside bearing edges on the drum. The outside edge will be an eighth inch round over. And now I'm putting a 45 degree edge on the inside of the drum. And of course the bit is on the inside of the drum so you can't see a darn thing. So we're going to zoom through this pretty quick. And here the shell is when I'm pretty much finished with it. The wood type is beech, and I have Danish oil as a finish so far. I will add a clear coat finish to it on top, and that will complete the shell. Right now the plan is to use two blugs on this, but I like experimenting, so that could always change in the end. If you've enjoyed this video, I encourage you to click the like button. Thanks for watching.